Do you have images where the subject doesn't stand out? Would you like to make portraits that you've taken, even outdoors, look like they have studio lighting? Well, in this video, you'll learn how to add a background spotlight to your images using the masking tools in Lightroom Classic. You'll see how to go from this to this really quickly and easily and how to save it as a preset so you can do it with one click. Hi, I'm Darlene with Digital Photo Mentor. And if you're ready to learn my Lightroom Classic background spotlight trick, let's get started. I'm gonna be using this image to demonstrate, and if you'd like to follow along, you can download it from Unsplash. I've made a full collection of images that work well with this technique, and I'll put a link to that collection in the description area below for you. So to get started, open the masking tools and then select radial gradient. Next, draw a circle or an oval roughly over the person's face and then move it down so it's sort of over their shoulders. For this one, she's a little bit off center, so I'm gonna put it here. You can increase or decrease the feather to make the edge softer or harder. So the more it's feathered, the softer it will blend into the background. Once you've got your radial filter placed, then we just need to add some brightness. So make sure you have the tone section opened and then just increase the exposure. I also usually increase the whites a little bit and possibly even the highlights. Now you'll notice that the problem here is that it's also increasing the brightness of the subject, but that's easy to fix with Lightroom's masking tools. All you need to do is click subtract right here and choose select subject. Lightroom does a really good job of picking out the subject, especially when you have people in the photo. Notice that it did that here. If we turn the overlay on, I'm using a red one here so you can see where the mask is applying in red. It's only going on the background. So it's almost like it's behind her. It's a little trick. This is a technique that studio portrait photographers use where they add a light behind the subject facing the background to put a spotlight on the background. So this is a really handy thing to use if you don't have multiple lights to be able to do that or the skills perhaps. So you can see I've just brightened it up a little bit right around her shoulders. I recommend naming your mask and I'm just gonna call it background spotlight. Then the only other thing I'm going to apply here is an edge vignette. So that is in the effects panel and I'm just going to bring it down to about minus 35 or so. I'm also going to increase the feather once again so it's softening the edge. Remember, less feather or zero is a hard edge like this. More feather is a soft edge or more gradual fade. So I usually set the feather to zero, bring the midpoint or size in a little bit, get it positioned how I want it, then increase the feather somewhere up high, usually between 70 and 100. Using the backslash key on the keyboard, you'll see the before, and after. Now as promised, I'm gonna show you how to save this as a preset. So you can make it a one-click operation. In the left-hand panel, under the presets, you'll see the plus sign, click plus, create preset, and then give it a name. Then I recommend clicking check none and only ticking off the mask for the background spotlight and post crop vignette. Do not add any other settings into your preset. So if you've done any other adjustments, just choose these two. And then save it in a group or in your user presets. I've already done that and I've actually created two versions. Let's see how it applies on other images. Here's another very similar image from the same photographer. I've called this one background light vertical because I've created two different versions. One for vertical, where the spotlight is centered but a little bit lower when the image is portrait orientation, and one for horizontal, which has the spotlight more in the center. But it's easy to edit. So even if the spotlight is in the wrong spot, you can just open up the masks, open up this one here to find the radial gradient, 
and place it where you need it to go, like so. Let's try it on a completely different image. I've already done some editing on this image. It originally was color, and I turned it to black and white and did some portrait editing on her skin. This is a perfect example of why you want to be really careful which things you check off when you save your preset. I don't want to overwrite any of the other edits that I've already done. So I'm going to find the preset for Vertigo and just apply it. Now you can see there's a gentle glow around the edges here. And if I open the masking tool, you can see all the other masks that I applied previously that are still there. So that's why it's important not to overwrite everything. Now I could choose the radial gradient and either move it around, make it larger, or increase the brightness. I want just this soft glow around her hair. You see what that's doing? It's just separating her a little bit more from the background. Now you might be saying, well, I don't do any studio portraits, so this isn't going to work for me. So let's try it on some outdoor shots. Here's another stock image. Let's apply it and see how it works. That's pretty good. Let's just move the radial gradient around, maybe make it a little bit over this shoulder as well, and let's just spotlight her. Here's a before and after. It just helps to focus in on her a little bit more. Likewise, it also works really well even if the subject has complex hair, like this one. So if we move this radial gradient around, you can see that it's doing a really good job of highlighting in behind her, even with the complex hair. Another example, again, one click. Take a look at this one. I've already darkened the background using a different mask for the background. Now I'm gonna add the spotlight. Can you see what that's doing? This is a simple portrait taken outdoors against what looks like a wall, and it now looks like a studio image. If you wanna see the masks I used on this one, I used the face editing to smooth her skin, used this one to darken the background, and then the trick that I just showed you to add the background light. So you don't have to be a studio photographer to use this trick. You also don't even have to photograph people. Let's look at another example. How about this guy? Remember I said I created a horizontal version? The only difference is where the spotlight is. So you can save multiple versions with the spotlight in different spots, or you can just literally move it around. See how magic it is? It's like it's behind him. But look at the difference. Flat background. Now it seems more three-dimensional. Here's another horizontal. Works great on her. And even floral images. There's the radial gradient. You can move it around, resize it, and reshape it. In this case, I might lower the feather and make the gradient a little smaller just so there's a little bit of glow coming from around the edges of that flower. Let's see what it's doing. See that? So let me ask you a couple questions. Have you ever considered or thought about using the Lightroom masking tools in this way? If not, can you see yourself using this technique and applying it to your images? Let me know in the comments below. And if you want more tips and tricks like this one, check out Lightroom for Photographers, the complete course. If you'd like to watch another video here on YouTube, click here now. Happy masking and I'll see you next time.